Hi, my name is Mike Goddard. I'm a field engineer in the enablement group at Pivotal. I'm here to talk you through some material on SQL join types and their implementation within the Greenplum database. So we're going to go over what types of joins are available to you as you write your SQL. Quick demo of those joins. Uh, we're going to go on to row elimination, uh, minimizing data movement, and some join implementations that you'll see in query plans. And then we're going to urge you to try the, the labs out to practice some of this stuff on your own. Joins in SQL give SQL its power. They enable us to combine data from different data sources, different tables, in interesting ways to achieve the results that we want, um, give us insight into the data. And GPDB gives us this ability on very large data sets. These are the join types available to you as a SQL user. You have the inner join, which is possibly the most common type of join you'll see or you'll use. The resulting data set is obtained by combining two tables on a common column. Each row in the left table is compared against each row in the right table. All matching rows are returned in the result set. An equijoin is the special case of an inner join that uses an equality comparison in the join predicate. There are three types of outer join. Left outer join, right outer join, and full outer join. In the left outer join, the query returns all the rows from the left table, even if there is no matching row in the right table. It also returns matching rows from the right table. Rows in the right table that do not match are just not included in the result set. The right outer join is similar to the left outer join. You just kind of flip the role of the left and right. In the full outer join, you get all rows returned from both tables where there's a match. And you get nulls for rows that don't have a match. In a cross join, uh, which is also called a Cartesian product of two tables. The result set contains every row of the table on the left combined with every row of the table on the right. So, for example, if you had two tables each containing five rows, your result set will contain 25 rows. So before we dive into some more slides, I want to illustrate some of these join types available to you using this demo. I built this demo using the Sandbox VM, a virtual machine available on the Pivotal network. And you can access that if you haven't already uh, through the URL uh, greenplum.org. The download size is about two gigabytes and there is one available for VMware or VirtualBox. So either one whichever one you prefer. I've created two simple tables, clients and orders. Uh, clients has an ID and a name column, and orders has an ID and a value column. And in these queries, we're going to join on the ID column. So if we look at the data in clients, we have three rows. Bob, Joe, and Alice, and in orders, uh, another three rows, you know, with sort of trivial names there. So let's see here. We're going to start off with the most common join type that, that we see, uh, the inner join. So we're going to select uh, from the clients table the ID and the name, and then the value from the orders table here. Um, we're going to join on the ID field. And there's just an order by here so that the output is consistent across all these queries. So let me try and run the inner join here. So notice here with the results of this join, even though each of the tables had three rows, there were only two rows for which uh, the IDs actually um, equated in both of the tables. So that's why we only get two rows of output here. So in the left outer join, we'll look at a way to, um, to change that behavior. 
So here we're going to select star from the clients, uh, and we're going to left outer join orders again on the ID. So let's see what we get here. So in this case, we get each of the three rows from the clients table, and we get um, the two rows that match from the orders table. Uh, we didn't get all three rows, uh, and then we got the, the null for the entry in the clients table that didn't have a corresponding entry in orders. So that's the left outer join. So here we look at the right outer join, which is very similar to the left outer join, um, except that we kind of flip the behavior and we take all the rows from the right hand table. So here I wanted to also illustrate that the, the word outer is implicit here. So in this case, in this query, we're going to just omit that and just run with uh, without specifying outer. I just have it there in a comment. Okay, so notice here on the output now. Um, so for the table on the on the right, um, the um, orders table, we get all three of the rows, um, but we only get two rows from the clients table the ones with IDs one and two, and we just get a null uh, for that third order that doesn't really correlate with any, any client. So in the final example here, a full outer join, we're gonna look at how to get all the data, regardless of whether there was an order for that client or if there was a client connected to that order. So here we're gonna use the full join and I may just type in outer here just uh, because either way it'll work. So here we get this list uh, a matrix that has all the clients represented and all the orders regardless of whether um, there is a client connected to an order um, so that last row, uh, row number four, or whether there was even an order for a given client. So Joe ID zero had no order, but we still get output for that user, for that client. Okay, in this inner join example, we have an equi join because the join condition is an equals uh, in that where clause there. So inner joins are simple to write. Um, you require a join condition. Um, typically called inner joins, also simple joins or even equi joins. So in this case, of this inner join, we want the ID, the name, and the value. Um, and they're going to come from two different tables, clients and orders. So these are the same tables, same types of queries we saw in the demo. There's also an ANSI syntax for joins. Um, select star from clients, join orders on clients.id equals orders.id. So it's just an alternative way to specify that, that inner join. And basically the same result. So in a left outer join, what we see here is in the second and third rows of output, we see the same type of re the same result that we did from the inner join. But in the top row, which is in red, we get an additional row from the table on the left, the clients table, even though there was no match for that in the orders table. So if you think about this, I, you know why it might be useful where, where you would use it. Suppose you had a list of clients and you have purchased data for the last month but you want a report of the sales for all the clients, even the ones that didn't buy anything that month. So this sort of report could be useful uh, potentially to your sales staff for targeting those clients who haven't made any purchase in the month. Okay, in the right outer join, take the same scenario as the left outer join, but we flip the roles of the tables. So here we've got, again, in, in the first and second rows of output, We've got the same thing we did from that inner join, but then we have the additional row 
the third one highlighted in blue, which is taken from the right hand table, even though there was no corresponding uh, row in the clients table on the left side of that join. So in a full outer join, you basically combine a left and a right outer join. So it's basically, again, you could think of it as an inner join, but with the addition of any missing data from either table. So from the left table in red on the top and from the right table in blue on the bottom. So if you recall from the previous slide there, the ID column appeared twice in the output. It was redundant. The natural keyword uh, provides a, a way to eliminate that. Um, so it only includes that join column uh, once in the output, which makes the output to me look uh, a lot more readable. Cartesian or, or cross joins, um, Typically, they might be used unintentionally because sometimes you, you, you haven't gotten your predicate uh, correct in your where clause, so you're not constraining the uh, result the way you thought you, you were going to. Um, it, it might be that you actually want this. Um, but it, So basically, again, it, it combines every row in the left table with every one in the right. So in this case, with our clients and orders table, you can see in the output matrix here, uh, we've got the three uh, rows in the clients table and each of those is mapped to each of the three rows in the orders table so for a total of nine rows of output. So consider the case of a billion row table cross joined to a hundred row table and your result set being a hundred billion rows. It's, it's a substantial amount of data in, in a result set. So um, it, it's um, it has the potential to be a, a real performance uh, issue if you unintentionally do this. So when Greenplum executes a query plan, it attempts to eliminate as many rows as possible. The optimizer tries to be as restrictive as possible before the joins to reduce the number of rows returned for the join. The goals that the join is performed using only the rows and columns needed for the join. So you have the concept of projection where you're only using the columns that are required by the query select clause. And let me give you an example to make this more concrete here. So if we look at uh, elimination of, uh, of rows and, and columns through projection, um, we're selecting the user ID from table um, users and the country description column from the countries table. And what we're doing is we're putting the first restriction on the query using the where clause to be area ID equals 771. So that's going to restrict significantly the number of rows returned. Next, you apply the join condition between the two tables. And then finally, the columns selected for projection are only those in the select statement. So only user ID, country ID, and country dis description. So if we look at joins, we've got how, they're in, how the joins are implemented in a parallel uh, database system like Greenplum. We've got a parallel implementation so the core join algorithms themselves are going to be the same as in a non-distributed system. But we have the additional detail of how do we partition the data and still guarantee correctness in this distributed system. So for the most part, regardless of the algorithm, whether it's a merge, a hash, or a nested loop join, these details are going to be the same in this parallel environment as they are in a a typical um, uh, non-parallel database. So with row redistribution and motion during joins, we'd like to avoid that if possible. So in general, if you can do a co-located join, you do that. 
between broadcast and redistributed joins, the optimizer basically looks at the cost using the statistics on the table of the motion. And it always chooses the plan that it believes to be the cheapest way to execute the query. Um, obviously, you need up-to-date statistics on your tables to do this successfully. So for a co-located join, if the join key is the distribution key for both of the tables, then we can guarantee the join will be handled locally on each segment without any kind of redistribution or motion of the data. This is obviously the most efficient way to, to do your join. Um, when you're organizing your data, designing your schema, it's a key consideration if you know that um, certain tables are going to be joined, you can lay them out in this way to, to optimize that. Um, so all equal keys are hashed to the same node, so the join results will be correct. So in a broadcast join, neither of the tables is distributed by the join keys. Um, one of the tables is, is going to be considerably smaller than the other table. And if this is the case, we can broadcast the smaller table. If we do that, all the segments are going to have a complete copy of the smaller table. And then we can perform a co-located join independently on each one of the segments. So each row of the larger table can see all the target rows in the smaller table. And so those join results will be correct. In a redistributed join, one or both of the tables isn't distributed on the join key. We can redistribute those tables. Once we do that, we perform a co-located join. So all the equal keys are hashed to the same node, so they land on the same node after the redistribution. The joins are going to be uh, done as co-located joins, and the results will be correct again. So those were considerations for how do you do joins in a parallel environment, um, an MPP environment like Greenplum. Uh, this, this next part is we're going to talk about the implementations of these joins. Um, these are the ways that Greenplum joins two tables. And these are the kind of uh, joins you're going to see in, in your query plans when you do an analyze. You're going to see a sort merge join or a merge join hash join, and a nested loop join. So in the sort merge join, which is a common type of join if the join condition is based on an inequality operator, like less than, less than equals, greater than, or greater than, or equal to, but not not equal to. So it combines this, these steps. It sorts the tables by this join column, the join attribute, then it scans the two tables in parallel, and as it scans those, it combines matching rows to form join rows. Here's an illustration of this process in some code. Um, it's actually some C-sharp code, but it, it basically just shows uh, walking through, you've got a output, uh, which is a relation class, which you instantiate in line three, then we enter this while loop in line four. And as long as we're not past the end of the left or the right table, we, we keep going. If the left table's key is the same as the right table's key, we add that key to the output. And then we advance the left and right. If the left key is less than the right key, we advance the left. Otherwise, we advance the right to so try and keep them aligned. And then we uh, re finally return the output uh, when we're done. So in a hash join, we've got a couple of uh, sort of phases, we call it. We call the, the initial part the build phase, where we take the smaller table, scan it, and create an in-memory hash table. And in this hash table, the keys are going to be the join columns, and the values are the corresponding rows from that table. Then we have what we call the probe phase. In this phase, we scan the larger table and find the relevant rows from the smaller one just by looking up the, the rows in the hash table using the key. 
the join key. And this is very fast because uh, in-memory hash tables are uh, fast for looking values up in. In a nested loop join, which can potentially be one of the most efficient types of joins if you have indexes on your tables, basically what you do is for each row of the table on the left, you enter a loop, you scan the right table to find a match, and that's the nested loop. And if you have indexes on the join columns, this will become efficient. Um, typically, if you don't have indexes, this, this can be very inefficient. So it's, it's efficient if you have indexes. It's typically inefficient in a big data uh, environment. So if you see nested loops in your query plans, you should um, consider whether you, you think those are, are correct and potentially um, look at ways to, to alter the behavior of the query planner. So if you have uh, tables that uh, you have more than one, or sorry, more than two tables in a join, you have n tables and n way join, they're basically reduced to a series of two table joins because the query engine can only work on two tables at a time. So what you do is you, you build up your result uh, sort of through a tree of join steps, each step having two inputs. So in this session, I just wanted to go over um, what, what join types are available to you, uh, walk you through a quick demo, kind of take you through how data is eliminated through row elimination and projection of columns, and how we look to minimize data movement in joins. And then we just looked at some of the joint implementations that you'll see in the query plans. So hash joins, uh, sort merge joins, and nested loop joins. At this point, it would be great if you could just go directly into the lab and try some of this stuff out to really make this uh, a little bit more concrete. Uh, thanks very much for your time today.